guys and girls, I'm James. Welcome to the channel. Today we're taking a look at another beginner mini drone, the Hildow drone. Of course, these manufacturers, they send me these drones, but they, they don't have any input on my reviews. And this one's this price on Amazon right now. But if you look, there is a 5% discount code. Comes in a really nice case with three batteries, a nice remote, good app, extra props, prop guards, uh, 1080p camera. Seems more like a 720p to me. It is adjustable, goes up and down. Uh, kind of reminds me of the look of the FPV, but man, these front lights. Dude, these things are so cool. Oh my gosh. And they change colors and they go back and forth. It kind of reminds me of like the day the Earth stood still. Was that Gort, uh, that robot? And it looks so cool. I can't wait to fly this at night. I've already flown it during the day and I've already done my review on it, but I want to fly this thing at night. This thing looks really cool. Pretty good flight time about average for these. It's not a micro mini drone, so it's not like the HS210 or some of these smaller drones like this, but it, but it does have some stiff competition. And I really like the HS430. This one's got a really good camera on it, but you look, this one's quite a bit bigger. Matter of fact, it's about the same size as the DJI Mini, maybe just a little bit smaller, but it weighs less than half as much, of course. So it's got some big frontal and side area. So if it's windy outside, it's gonna catch it. So you gotta fly it in light winds. I like it that it has foldable prop. They are brushed motors. Let's go put her up in the air. I'll show you how she flies. She flies really good. It's got a lot of power to it, how cool the lights are. And then I'll sit down and show you how to get the remote bound to the drone, how to get the gyro set, and how to get the camera working through the app. And then we'll come back for our final review. Man, those are so cool. <laughs> Let's go put her up in the air. Man, I don't know why. Every time I've got to turn it on and then turn it back off on the remote. So it's speed one, two, three beeps, speed three. All right, so it's doing it again. So see, it doesn't want to go forward. So what I did last time is I hit the landing button and then now it'll go forward. So each drone has its own little quirkiness. Man, this is a cool looking little drone. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> All right, let's try that again. See, now it'll go forward, and then sometimes it'll pitch forward, and sometimes it won't. So it's doing it again. So when it does that, see, it, it won't pitch forward up on me. Man, those are some cool looking lights. It'll turn, so if I hit down, Oh, I gotta fly this at night. This is gonna look cool. All right, I don't know why I have the antennas extended. They're fake. I guess just because I'm used to it, it makes me feel better. So the two things with this drone that are quirky is one, I couldn't get the props to unlock and spin unless I turn the remote on and off, and then it works perfect every time. And also, once I go get up and I pitch forward, it's fine until the second time I try to do it. And then it won't pitch forward except really slow. And if it's windy, it's gonna fall away from you. So if I hit the down button to make it try to land and then pitch it forward, it does fantastic and it does it really good for the rest of the flight. So there's two quirkiness. Uh, I got it figured out. If a beginner got this drone, he would probably send it back thinking there's something wrong with it. They'll probably get that worked out. But other than that, it really flies good. I mean, there's no latency in the controls. It yaws left and right, spins and flips. Uh, what I mean by there's no latency, when it's headed towards something, it will turn away from it and come back at you really quick. Some of these beginner drones, they take too long to turn around. So if you're headed towards something, it's going to crash into it because you can't stop it and make it spin around back at you. Also, I always say, uh, try to have an agenda. Don't just aimlessly fly around. Uh, in the beginning, you want to, to learn the orientation of the drone. But once you really start learning what you're doing, try to have it go around you, facing you, have it go around you, facing away from you, try figure eights, just everything you can to improve your skill set and make it more fun. As you can see, the pond is very calm. Uh, it's not a windy day at all. If there's any wind at all, go straight to speed three. See, look how quick this thing is. It's really quick and see how fast it turns around. You don't get that with these little cheap drones, but this thing flies really good. There's the sun. Very easy to control. Uh, it does have an optical flow sensor on the bottom. So as I'm flying it kind of low right here, it does register kind of where the ground is. I mean, I'm sure it'll go into the ground if you push down, but it does a really good job of holding its altitude above the ground. 
Another thing, this is not a GPS drone, so it does not use the satellites to hold its position. You, as the pilot, are in charge of where it's going. So if the wind starts to grab it and pull it away, or you lose orientation of it, it's important to learn where the emergency stop is. So unfortunately, it's the down button, and that's with a lot of other drones also. So you can either push it quick to have it land, or you can hold it down and it'll fall out of the sky just like that. So be sure and practice that. So here's some video I took during the day. As you can tell, I mean, it's not really a 1080p camera. I mean, 720 would be pushing it. If you want a mini drone with a really good camera, the HS430 was really good. Um, here's some photos it took. Uh, as you can tell, it's real pixelated. Then I came out at night and here's low light video. Then I thought I would try the obstacle avoidance. So I came out and to try the lights at night. Man, it looks really cool at night. I mean, this thing is <laughs> really having a lot of fun with it. So here I try to make it come at me and hit me, and it actually worked pretty good. But it was hit or miss uh, right here. So it's trying to make it come at me, it won't hit me, oh. and it backs wow, away. But if you walk up to it and you put your hand up against the All sides right. and stuff, it doesn't register it. If you're going towards something that's very large, Yep, there you go. See the optical yeah, avoidance. I was trying to come in sideways. It worked pretty good, uh, but it was hit or miss. So don't trust optical avoidance on any drone, especially a budget drone. But man, those lights are so cool. All right, so let's go inside and I'll show you how to get the remote working, the app working, the camera working and everything. All right, guys. So once you get the package, it comes with a really nice carrying case. Got a little handle to it. it zips up. I like the feel of it. You open it up, you got the drone, the remote, extra props, prop guards, a charger, and three batteries. Two right here, and then one in the drone. And these props are labeled. Very hard to see, but they are labeled right there. Make sure you get the right ones on for the angle of attack. So the drone... So look at the front of this drone. This is the coolest looking little drone. You turn it on back here. Check out that light. That is so cool. Oh my gosh. So anyway, so um, here's a camera. It, you can move it up and down, which is great. Drives me nuts when these things are down and you can't adjust it, which almost makes them useless. It, it does have obstacle avoidance sensors here, uh, here, and on the bottom. There's an antenna on the bottom right here. Be sure you and don't mess with that. The batteries snap in and out. There are 650 milliwatt per hour batteries and they charge up in about an hour. And I think I was getting seven or eight minutes of flight time. So on the remote, I've seen this remote before. These antennas aren't real. <laughs> I know you can put them up if you want, makes you feel better, but they're not real. On the back, it takes three AA batteries, comes with a handy dandy screwdriver to take that out. Uh, on the top is your speed button on this side, and you'll hear three beeps when you push it when I was flying it, one, two, three. And then here's return to home in headless mode. Don't ever use that. It's not a GPS drone, so it doesn't know where, how to get back. I don't know why they say they do that. And over here is to make it spin, which is really cool. And over here is a short press to take a photo, long press to take a video. And then uh, these top two buttons right here and these two right here are your trim buttons. So if it seems to be sliding to the left or to the right, you just hold down on one of these buttons until you get it adjusted. It takes a little bit of practice, but you'll get the hang of it. Uh, this right here is to unlock the motors, and then this is to, to land. And pull this out, and your phone can slide into this little compartment here on the bottom. Very easy, T turns on and off right here. It's cool that it comes with three batteries and a case. So let's see what he weighs in at. My wife asked, why are some he's and some she's? I said, well, it just matters what they look like. This one looks like a he. <laughs> so he weighs in at 103 grams, which compared to like, you know, the Sandrock U61, which is 62. So it's way bigger than like the Sandrock U61. Matter of fact, if you compare it to like the DJI Mini, they look, they're pretty close to the same size. But the DJI Mini, of course, weighs 242 grams. So this one's about half the, was less than half the weight of the DJI. Also, it's got a, a lot of frontal and side area. So if it's windy outside, it does seem to catch more wind. So be sure and put it into speed three as soon as you take off. 
So how much is 103 grams? Well, it's about a little bit more than three ounces or a little can of small dog food. Good, it's not over. I don't have to eat any. So you power on the remote and then you power on the drone and it connects automatically. But what you do is you pull down and to the right to set the gyros. It changed colors and it goes back and then it's green instead of red, I think. I don't know. I just think that those are so cool. Then you press unlock that unlocks them and you hear that beep. Now they're unlocked and then you can just push up. Yeah, every once in a while, every drone's kind of quirky. So sometimes you press unlock and it doesn't work. If it doesn't, just push, just restart it and set, and set your gyros again and then press unlock. And then you push up and it'll take off. And then if we hit this and hold down, yeah, that, so this is emergency stop also to hold down on this. So if you're flying it and it doesn't want to seem to go forward, what I did, it did that to me two or three times. It just didn't want to go forward. So when I hit land and then tried it, then it took off. Every drone kind of has its own little quirkiness and that was just one to this. It seemed to work its way out pretty good. So now it's ready to fly, but now how to get the camera to work is you, you go to your instruction book at booklet slash comedy guide. And the reason I say that is they should have had someone who speaks English proof, proofread this. There's some pretty funny stuff in here. Right here it says, uh, don't pierce the battery casing with a nail or other sharp object. Break it open with a hammer or step on it. <laughs> and then um, right here it says, avoid short circuits by fitting the batteries incorrectly. <laughs> what does that mean? I think they're supposed to say incorrectly and not incorrectly. And then lastly, it says, a fixed height function landing on a horizontal surface will cause the drone to fly and fly. <laughs> I'm not making fun of this company, but it's a great drone, but it's just, it's so much fun to read some of these. So anyway, so to get the camera to work, you go to the QR code. I've seen this app before, and then you uh, download the, then you download the app by putting your camera to the QR code. Of course, I used my phone to fly it, but I'm going to use my iPad to show you how to use it. Open up your camera, go to the, go to the app. It says KYFPV. So I see this app doesn't have very good ratings. Guys, all these apps are the same. These are beginner drones. You need to make a pre-start checklist. People buy these drones and they don't know how to use them because they don't want to follow everything, the instructions, just like I did when I started. I didn't want to follow the instructions and read everything and go everything, but it's important that this drone knows what to do. You, you got to know how to pair the drone, the remote to the drone and how to set your gyros. If you don't set your gyros, it's going to fly off crooked because it needs to be on a flat, it needs to be on a completely flat surface when you set your gyros by pu you know, pulling down and to the right and do that every time. So now that the, now it's downloaded, we can open up the app and here's the app. And then you hit start and it takes you to the app, but it's not gonna work because it's a Wi-Fi drone. So you, what you gotta do is you gotta go back to your settings, the drone turned off, turn it back on. Those cool lights, oh my gosh. <laughs> Then you go to your Wi-Fi, KYFD. Now it's con now it's connected. So now you can go back to the app and hit start. And your camera's working. It's a 1080p camera. To me, it looks more like a 720p. But um, you're buying these just to learn how to fly. Really, you're not just buying these just for the camera. So you can hit you can you can take a. You can start a video and you see the red lights on. So now it's recording and it'll save it to the gallery and you can hit, take a photo and I'll show you some of those I took outside. Also, then you can control your speed here or you can do it with the remote. I would use the remote on everything. Just use this to, Ooh, and that's the gestures and all that stuff. I wouldn't do any of that. Oh, here's your gallery. And there's the picture we just took. And go back to the gallery and here's your video and there's the video we just took and you can save those all right so let's go all right so let's go back for our final review 
Hey guys, thanks so much for watching my review of the Hilldown drone. Guys, this thing is really cool. The lights are really cool. It's got a lot of power. If you did notice when I was flying it, I have to be honest with you, that like the second or third time I tried to pitch it forward, it wouldn't go forward, but really, really slow. But as soon as I hit the land button and then took off, for the rest of the flight, it was fine. But every time I took off, it seemed to have that problem. About the second or the third time, it may just be this drone, but it didn't really bother me once I figured it out. But if I was a beginner and I was flying this drone, that would have drove me nuts because I would think it was broken. It wouldn't go forward. A good flight time, lots of speed. Camera doesn't seem like a 1080. It seems more like a 720. So at this price point, how does it stand against its competition? I think um, it flies just as good as the HS430. I think the camera's way better on this one, uh, but it, this one doesn't have the cool lights. It does kind of have a cool light in the front, but nothing like this. And this one looks really good. Uh, I like the remote a little bit better on this one. If you're wanting to fly indoors, you really need a, a drone with covered props. And this one's kind of big to be flying indoors, to be honest with you anyway. So uh, if you want to fly indoors, I would go with something that has covered props, kind of like the, the DERC uh, D23 that's got some cool lights that I just reviewed, or that Sandrock U61 that's been around for a long time. They just keep, the price keeps going down and down. I think it's like $35 now. But you can't go wrong with this one. I've never heard of Hildow before. Uh, they sent me two drones. I think they knocked it out of the park with the looks on this drone. So I'm looking forward to see what they put out in the future. Didn't really test a lot into the obstacle avoidance. It didn't seem to work so-so. At this price point, you can't think that it's like a $1,000 drone and it's going to have obstacle avoidance. I don't even trust obstacle avoidance in my $1,000 drones. The only one I trust obstacle avoidance on is a Scadio 2 because there's too many drones that look like this that had obstacle avoidance, but people trusted it. And this is what you end up with. <laughs> and also, they start with this drone without buying a beginner mini drone to learn the orientation of it. So it's real important to start with a budget drone like this. Crash this one. Don't crash a thousand dollar drone. But once you fly this for a while, like I said when I was flying it, you'll you'll start to get the hang of it. Your skill set will get better and you'll start mastering those controls. And then you'll feel much more comfortable when you put a big drone in the air. And it's safer for you, your drone, and everyone around you. But guys, as always, if you got something out of this, please like and subscribe. And if you buy this one, let me know how you like it. I mean, this is pretty cool looking, and I'll see you in the next one.